What is up, everybody? It is Alex from Heavy New York. We are back in the dark red St. Vitus basement, and today we are here with my friend Rob of Cognitive. Great to be able to catch up with you, man. Thanks for having me, Alex. Yeah, it's great to be able to talk with you and talk with you in person rather than on phone in isolation. Way cooler this way. Yeah. And you look way better. Oh, thank you. I appreciate <laughs> it. Yeah, you know, you, you just looked like a big square iPhone that was talking. Like, like what the hell, man? It's I, got a, I got a potato for a cell phone. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> a potato for a cell phone? Yes. Yeah. The, the pixelation's terrible. Yeah, well, I, you mash it and make some mashed potatoes. It's good. It was good. Very awesome. But it's so great to have you here. Thank you again for giving us some great new music to wait out the quarantine times with Malevolent Thoughts of a Haste and Extinction, which came out uh, last year. I just want to know, like, was, was your intention to make just a direct continuation of what we previously heard on your uh, earlier work? Or did this was this meant to sort of signify a new beginning for Cognitive in a way? I think it was making it better and just the next evolution but we were also like it was the first record with tyler our bass player first record with aj and it was just like okay like this needs to be the new standard for us moving forward like songwriting and just just everything i felt like so like i think it was a mix of what you said evolution and also being like not necessarily a fresh start because i i take pride in all the stuff we've ever done but like to me it was like okay like this has to be like the bare minimum we're going to do from now on as like musicians so for yeah. me at least that's how i felt so this is almost you would say like maybe not a continuation but it could almost be like the turning point for cognitive in a way right i'd like to hope so i yeah, <laughs> think so awesome and congrats on signing with metal blade i mean i would imagine there's a lot of great new things in the works right it's incredible because like I, I said this at our tour kickoff show like you start a band and like you have the hopes and dreams of doing it but like you get older you're like if it happens, it happens. And then when it happens, you're like, whoa, like dreams come true. So like to me, like it's humbling because you don't think about that stuff actually happening sometimes. You know what I mean? Yeah. You want it to happen. And you, like for us, like we work for it hard and I'm proud that like we worked so hard to get it. But it's still like, wow, we got that. Metal Blade was uh, the first label I did interviews for. So wow. Uh, so congrats. Interesting. To you. No, thank you. Thank you. Yep. Yep. Shout out to everybody at Metal Blade. Do you, when it comes to writing new material, does it always start off with maybe like a preconceived idea, or like is there maybe like a lot of improvising in riff writing or rhythm sections and stuff? It's a lot of me and Harry getting together and like either sending each other like, hey, there's th three riffs here, three riffs here, or me and him get together and it's like my riff, your riff, my riff every once in a while it's like hey guys here's a song i wrote a whole song but uh it's a lot of that from the ground up and then like me and harry program really terrible sounding drums mm -hmm. <laughs> send them the aj aj programs really cool sounding drums tyler will write his bass in like guitar pro and we go back and forth on that and drop it in and then me tyler and shane really work hard on the, like all the vocal patterns and the lyrics and stuff together mm -hmm. so it's it's a giant melting pot and uh from talking to you before like you mentioned that you know during the era of quarantine this was the first time where you were like doing a lot of file sharing and you wrote this record did maybe the isolation and this you know uncertainty maybe sort of like add another layer of you know intensity to the album or maybe you know isolation is just a great uh source for creativity in general so for us, like, I know for me, like, it was just a lot of, like, going everything with a fine-tooth comb because it wasn't like, hey, we're practicing two times a week. Like I said, we didn't see each other. We started writing the record, what, last December or the December before that, and we didn't see each other until we recorded the record, tracked it the following December. So, like, it was a lot of fine-tooth, like, just going over stuff. And, like, it was interesting doing lyrics because, like, Shane was saying, like, he wasn't out in the world doing stuff so it was like he was like it's hard to find inspiration to write vocally like lyrically i mean so we all were like tying into stuff and then there was a couple times where like there were some like video game songs that people didn't realize like to feed the worms is about legacy of kane oh wow the malls about uh halo oh wow and my bass player wrote all the lyrics to that um so it was funny that two video games kind of got sneaked in there hey video games are a great source for They're death sick. metal i They're mean sick. i mean think video about games like, are death metal as shit yeah absolutely i mean um i remember when like uh spawn had like the corn logo in every like oh yeah yeah the yeah, yeah, games yeah had like yeah. the corn logo in it and i mean they had slipknot in there and rob zombie and it's just like video games themselves like they're just some of them are just dark and cool looking do you have a favorite video game oh man mass effects up there gears of wars up there god of wars up there 
Oh, uh, man, there's so many sick video games. I could go on. We don't want to. Don't get me down that rabbit hole. Uh, I mean, I'm more than happy. I know. It's bad. Oh, man, there's so many cool video games. The, 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 the set will go on without you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll yeah, still yeah. be here talking video games. They sound okay up there. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's like a that's like a modern-day Spinal Tap oh, moment. Man, I, I, I love video games. Yeah. It's awesome. Who doesn't? Now, um, we talked a lot about, like, the current uh, aspects with Cognitive and what the future holds, but this year is the 10-year anniversary the world first heard Cognitive because this is the 10-year anniversary of the Horrid Swarm, the first Cognitive EP. And correct me if I'm wrong, but you are actually the only original member from that era of Cognitive, yes, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So kind of, I was kind of wondering if we could turn back the clock a little bit and, like, you know, how different was the songwriting process back then? And, like, how has the evolution came? And, like, what what are, like, some fond memories of first writing oh, that EP? Man. So I just remember, like, even just getting the band together because, like, our original guitar player, Jake, like, I grew up with him. Like, my parents went to high school with his parents. So, like, there's pictures of him holding me when I was a baby. So, <laughs> and it's, I have no problem saying this. It's, like, he was one of the reasons I wanted to play guitar because, like, I would see him playing guitar. I was like, I want to do that. And I was like, he his band wasn't around anymore at that time i was like yo let's just start something and my buddy mike castro who i still sw sing his praises to hell or high water is like one of the most amazing drummers on the face of the planet i think that dude could do jazz fusion blasting whatever and i was like dude we should we should get him and we started jamming and we had a couple songs and we were looking for a singer and this guy Shanir had hit us up and he sounded fucking awesome he's still like to this day i think he sounded awesome on that record and it was just us four at that time. We couldn't find a bass player, and first song we ever wrote was The Hard Swarm. Wow. Yeah, that was the first song, and I had written that, and then uh, it might have been in the form of a drone was the second song. Then it was like Falling Skies, Essence Oblivion, and then Numbered and Slaughter was the last song we wrote. And I remember like we were trying to figure out like just what songs to write about and I'd seen on like the Discovery Channel the hard swarms like based around like this giant locust swarm that happened that literally blocked out the sun for like I think it was five days. Wow. In America. Wow. And it, I think it went all the way up to Canada. Don't quote me on that. I, this is a long time ago when I seen this now. But okay. But uh, yeah, it was written about that. And then we were like, what do we call it? We we're like, why don't we just name it after that? And uh, the student Nev does art for bands. Uh, we hit him up to do the artwork and we were like, ew. Can you do it kind of about this and make sure it's got the Jersey Philly sign on it? And he was like, I got you. And he sent it to us. We were like, that's sick. That's amazing. And do you think maybe, I mean, you don't have to spoil mm -hmm. the set tonight, but 10 years, man. And a lot has happened. You're getting a since song. Then. You're getting one. Why not the whole fucking EP, man? We've got a new one to push. I, uh, dude, I promise you, we will. Uh, we did the, we did it in the form, or uh, yeah, in the form, uh, Hard Swarm back to front before, but. We were talking about do bringing it back, possibly. Okay. I'll do it for you, and I'll make sure you're there. Because uh, since I met you, you were like, dude, I love that. <laughs> I love that record. That was my first Cognitive album. It came out in uh, you know, 2012. Uh, tw uh, I think it just came out as I was finishing high school. So, dude, Oh, my God. Yeah, dude, uh, we, had, we had a lot of fun. I mean, dude, we were talking about it earlier. Like, we got to do a tour with Wormed. Uh, that was incredible. You know, I... I you don't think about doing that kind of stuff. And it's a shame because looking back now, like I'm, I was so into them now and I wish I appreciated them as much as I did then. Cause I loved them then, but I wasn't like, I know every part like I do now. So like, I'm like, Darn, I, I wish I caught on to it harder then. But like that was amazing. I mean, plenty of New York death fests and New Jersey death fests. Hell yeah. I, I, I think cognitive does have like, sort of like that, New Jersey or East Coast death metal charm behind it. And that kind of led me perfectly into my next question because, you know, Cognitive is New Jersey Philly band, you know, it's the same shit, right? right. But, like, ha is there kind of, like, a scene that you're involved with? Because I know you've had members of involved with Cognitive that have played in Hath or Waking the Cadaver and so on and so forth. So, like, I'd imagine there's sort of, like, a close-knit group of death metal I, bands. I just think that... The tri-state area, especially like Philly, New Jersey, has got some of the the sickest bands out there, and like the scene's awesome. And like Philly, I still think like you go there, like people come out, people come out, and I think Philly cares a lot. And I, I don't know, man, like the, the hardcore scene in Philly's, you know, blooming, always has been. The death metal scene in Philly, I think, is phenomenal. I, I do. I think there's a lot of awesome bands from our area, and there's legendary bands from our area and, and Jersey. Like you start with like Dillinger. You know yeah. what I mean? And he ripping corpse, and then you go to like Mortal Decay and stuff like God that. God forbid. Yeah, God, I love that band. Yeah. So you got all them kind of bands, and like, 
Philly now. Like we got Jesus Peace. Like that band's incredible, oh, man. So good. Jesus, Jesus. Aaron's a sweetheart. You know, there's a lot of really good bands. Tents on Hammer. Re- I think a very underappreciated band from our area. Like metal crossover band, kind of. Um, Dark Waters End, math metal band from our area. Like, like there's a lot of incredible bands. So. Yeah. I I love our area for shows and De- the scene. Definitely, and uh, I think uh, I think. I think history will soon tell that like you know the way that you know they focus on the Tampa Florida death metal scene I think in the future you know Cognitive and Hath and all these amazing bands are one day going to rise and have the same sort of legacy if it happens it happens man I'm fine with either or man like I just I just want bands to succeed and and every state to have a good scene which you know it's interesting now coming out pandemic starting to see more people I think be like I want to go now because after what happened, everyone's like, who knows when I'm going to see a show again kind of thing. Like, I think that was a... Yeah. And I think death metal is going to be like the soundtrack to the pandemic times, the way like swing music was the sound <laughs> to like World War II. It's, it, you know what's incredible right now? I think death metal is bigger than it's ever been. Oh, 100%. Especially look at Cannibal Corpse. Yeah. I, I mean, like, look at... look. I just saw Cannibal Corpse play Brooklyn Steel. I, I forgot. I think it's like a 1,500 cap or 2,500 cap. It's sold out. And Cannibal Corpse and Whitechapel and Revocation and yeah, Shadow yeah, and yeah, 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 so. and that's a heavy hitter show. I, I went and seen that in Baltimore. Yeah, so. and it was it sold out there. It was incredible. Yeah, so I think death metal is gonna. I think death metal is soon gonna be dominant. Maybe maybe one day death metal will be played on daytime radio instead of. I'm Taylor fine Swift. with it. Some people are like it shouldn't be there. Like I'm I'm fine with it being on the radio. Fair enough. <laughs> I, the fact that I've seen Goat Whore play a wedding, I'm willing to expect anything. That's now. sick. Yeah, and the bride almost knocked my teeth out. All that, <laughs> but um. <laughs> Yeah, that, that was pretty brutal. But um, And the final question I wanted to ask you is for people who haven't seen Cognitive live, but you know there is the famous saying that seeing a band live is nothing like listening to the album and vice versa. But do you put a similar energy into your live presence as you do when you are songwriting, or do you consider them like two separate games? I take pride in our live show so much. Like, like That's, I think, one of our strong points, like us live and our stage presence and all of something. Like, for me, like, like I always wanted to be like, I want to be the Dillinger of death metal where it's just constantly moving, constantly just being into the music. Cause to me, like people aren't going to move if you're not moving and I, I want to see people move. So to me, and not like, you know, I'm not going to lie. I think some of my riffs are cool. And I'm, uh, I'm playing them. I'm like, I think this is sick. Heck yeah. So like, to me, like, you know, I think we're definitely like a band you need to see live. Definitely. And, and, and I'm, you know, might not, you might like us better live than the record. I, I, c- I can concur. <laughs> I can concur. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But uh, thank you so much. Is there just anything else you would like uh, to promote for Cognitive in the future, like some new music in the works or well, anything else you'd like to plug? We're working on a new record for Metal Blade. Uh, don't know when it'll be out yet. You know, we're still writing. Um, tour announcements soon coming up. And uh, just come hang out and support any shows that you have. Know, if we're not playing any show. <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, thank you so much, Rob. Everybody, Rob of Cognitive, this is Alex from Heavy New York. It is great to be back. We will see you next time.